Okay, so the question I got was, um, in um, work situations, having judgment of others, uh, the gaze sort of pull me, pulling me into judgment uh, and stuff. And um, how do you sort of, um, you know, you're it, one is in the judgment before one has time to sort of deal with it and have it not be there. And then having to do the spiritual work afterwards. And how how do we not be in that? And um, well, that for me is the process. Okay, so one of the things which um, I got from Holkin's work is levels of consciousness. Um, and depending on how much of the ego is left, how much of the um, uh, the ego is still there uh, within the within the identity within the ego, to that extent, um, the speed. You know, it's like the spirit is less available, which is beyond time. So when there's no, the more you're identified with thoughts and the baggage of the ego, the thoughts and feelings in the body, uh, and that just comes through a function of doing spiritual work, um, uh, you're actually in time and you're in ego. So what you actually see is not, you don't see without ego, like zero ego there what you're seeing of the world is what the Course in Miracles call is ego perception. You know, I actually, you don't see with no ego, you're actually in your ego seeing people. So, and you're also in time. So it's like, okay, so it's like I'm in an office environment and suddenly a co-worker says, you're dumb, you made a mistake. Well, I'm already in my ego and I'll take that as a threat. And as a judgment from them, I'll judge them straight back for being equally as dumb as I am. And that's already happened because I'm already in my ego and I'm already being in my ego. To the extent I'm in ego, I'm in time and I'm in my ego stuff. And I'm actually witnessing a projection. The amount of ego I've got left in me that I haven't purified out through spiritual work will mean how sticky and how difficult it is to let that go. So it'll be like if I've got a lot of ego, especially around co-workers and judgment, then it will be like, and I'm still new to spiritual work, it'll be like a heavy hit. I'll be in my ego. I'll be, it might take me half an hour a day before I realize I need to get out of this and do some spiritual work. And I'll feel very angry at that person, at myself. So it'd be like a, a tornado. Um, if I've done, if I'm quite an advanced spiritual seeker, um, you know, I'm getting, I'm starting to get out of my ego baggage and starting to get into that timeless presence to some extent. So to some extent, you know, a lot of people like in 12 step progress spiritual groups say that sometimes they catch it before it starts. They don't, the ego doesn't catch it. It's just like, they're almost, there isn't much ego left in that area and you're almost in the timeless presence. So even if the ego tries to pick up a, a, a react to a judgment or tries to judge is dropped even before it can do it so that's like a really wonderful experience in spiritual seekers where it's like the uh, ego starting to vanish and there's this eternal timeless presence available to some extent and what normally would have been like a it seems like a co-worker is starting to say something horrible and the ego wants to respond with a reaction it just sort of vanishes as it starts to happen and there's a great feeling of, you know, bliss and happiness that that didn't happen. So that heaviness is gone. And of course, when there's no ego there, there's just the eternal presence or the, or you could call it the nothing or the silence or whatever you want to call it. Um, then, of course, um, what happens is actually you know, no, one isn't filtering through the ego perception. There's just infinite timeless presence and allowing what is to be. And so, um, and things are actually seen differently. You know, you're not seen through the filters of the ego, like, well, that person's sick and I have to pray for them and I have to do a Course in Miracles lesson for 10 minutes before I can let this go. So it's like the um, various things happen at various levels of the infinite. Like at a certain level, there's just unconditional love and presence. And even if something happened, which might have seemed an ego bad, it, it's just released and seen differently. Like nothing really happened, uh, nothing important happened, and what they said wasn't important. At, at, at even more advanced levels of disappearing into the infinite, you see, the world only exists and, and um, 
is witnessed, even the witnessing of the world is also a level of um, identification. So as you go to the witnesser of the witnesser of the of the wit, um, even the world and what's happening in the world starts to disappear. So and time disappears, of course, and and actually uh, the experience is that nothing is happening and nothing important is happening. So if we go back to the let's go back to the Course in Miracles and self inquiry. So Course in Miracles says all my thoughts are meaningless. If if your thoughts were hundred percent meaningless. Uh, all your thoughts in your ego are 100 percent meaningless. Then that means you'd have zero ego. Uh, to and then you you wouldn't be filtering through your ego and your ego thoughts and belief systems, the world, and therefore there would be no such thing as judgment or even thought or reaction to others, and there wouldn't even be a, a sense of self of self because that's also based on thought as well. So, but what if um, what if um, you see, like a co-worker, just the word co-worker is a label of separation. Uh, that's a person in a body separated from my body. So let's say we make all people meaningless, and I'm meaningless. If we take the Course of Miracles to an extreme, then would there be this experience of separation that there's a me and there's a separate co-worker and the co-worker just judged me and I should judge them back. That wouldn't exist, you see, if he was made it 100% meaningless. So if you make your thoughts meaningless, people meaningless, well, if thoughts are meaningless, then there is no thought that exists. Thoughts can only exist if there's something that wants to give meaning to thoughts. There's payoff from the ego, see? But bodies, all equally, what if we never didn't want to make the body? You see, uh, you know, what, what they call it meaningless, the opposite of meaninglessness, you could say specialness or importance or value. Yeah, you could say that's the opposite of 100% meaningless. So what if you made every person and every thought 100% meaningless? They would disappear, actually. You wouldn't experience yourself as being a person and another person and whatever they said being real. And what you see, do you see? So things only exist because of meaning. They actually don't, they don't, they don't register like uh, I'm going to I'm going to get into trouble for this video. I probably shouldn't say, it. but anyway, never mind. Let's say all men find handbags meaningless. Yeah, all men in the world find handbags meaningless, and all women find gadgets meaningless. Yeah, that, I'm going to get into trouble for that, but never mind. But you ask a man at the end of the day, like, how many handbags did you see? Uh, and you know, they, they probably say like, I noticed no handbags in the world today. Uh, but you, um, uh, I'll just I'll just pick on men because I get in less trouble. So it's like, but actually, I mean, women might have noticed handbags in the world because they're meaningful. But if it's if there's zero meaning in an object, a body is an object and a thought is an object, then actually you don't actually see it. It doesn't exist for you. You know, even if the world was full of handbags, actually that's true for me. Most days I I don't notice handbags. It's only because I give talks some or things like this, uh, that, uh, you know, I make fun of these uh, human stereotypes. Uh, but, you know, I, I wouldn't, but, you know, if someone seemed to have the latest iPhone or something, I might I might sort of be looking, gosh, I've never seen an iPhone that big. So that would be, that would, so that registers as a piece of information in my ego's day, you see. But to a woman, they might not have noticed that there are bigger iPhones around, you see, because that's not meaningful. But what about if bodies were not meaningful and your body was not meaningful? What if thoughts were not? What if the idea of the separate bodies around didn't exist? Uh, so what if there was no world? Would the world show up? So um, would that exist? So you see the different levels. So to be in ego, you're in time, you're in body, you're in past and future. It's a, it's a huge mess to be in the ego. Uh, therefore, when it seems and you believe that the other person's a body and you believe that the things they say are real and that they affect the thing that you are, which is a body and a thinker and a personality, don't they know who I am? How could they say that to me? How dare they say that to me? I'm going to kill them. You know, so all this stuff goes on when I'm identified with, with ego. So this thing, yeah, and that's 100 percent true, what was said in the question, you know, like, uh, there's a gaze. That's true. What gazes at things? It's the ego, of course. 
the pure silence doesn't have a have a, a gaze that directs itself at something or focuses on things or takes things personally you see so that's a tricky i mean that, that's a hard one to see it's unconscious that there's something even if you sit in a room something is unconsciously selecting things and making things meaningful you see now the things that are not meaningful you don't the gaze the ego gaze doesn't pick up you know uh, but um but the things that are meaningful like the ego is just waiting for someone to say something threatening you know uh and uh, or or even something nice doesn't matter whether it's good or a bad thing it just registers those things oh they said something bad about me me my body and my thinking and my personality you know i'm going to get offended at that they gave me a compliment you know oh i need, uh, i like this person you know, I, I feel so wonderful i'm an important person so so the gaze is the ego gaze there is no gaze in silence it does, it's not personal uh, it's equal it, there's love everywhere equally and there's presence everywhere and and there's nothing else to it and there's no separation so uh so i would like to see people without ego um without gaze and without judgment well that's the thing you see so there's different ways of deleting um deleting the ego uh, but usually in the most spiritual seekers things you make progress uh so that uh, and then at a certain point you you get this delightful thing where you don't react to what would have made you think as a judgment or a returned thought they start to disappear how do you do that but anyway nuts and bolts of it the practicalities of it well you know if you're doing the course in miracles it would be um just you keep praying for a miracle to see it differently pray for a miracle to see your own thoughts differently pray for a miracle to see that person differently pray for a miracle to see our judgments differently pray for a mir um you know pray for a miracle to see things in truth um uh or you could do the counseling of beliefs so god did not god did not create judgment in our from others and so that is not real god did not create me i'm not real god did not create that other people that can judge me that's not real could use the course of miracles in that way any any course of miracles lesson um my co-worker is meaningless you know whatever my co-worker says is meaningless his words are meaningless my thoughts about my co-worker are meaningless you could use that you know equally you can use any lesson in a course of miracles to delete the idea uh the underpinnings of a, a you and another person judging you and a you reacting to you my reactions to people are meaningless you see or i pray for a miracle to see my reactions to people differently so that's the course of miracles self-inquiry so okay so when i'm with the co-worker um okay so who's the me that's with the co-worker is there an observer of the me that's with a co-worker am i the me or am i the observer of the me and if i'm the observer is the me me or is the me nothing and if there's a co-worker there well is there a co-worker there for me and if there's a co-worker there for me what am i am i the body and the thinker or am i the uh am i the witnesser and if i'm the witnesser then what are they are they a body and a thinker or are they the witnesser and then is then then if i'm the witnesser and i'm nothing because i'm in the silence then what are they are they can the silence register something else as real that's not silence can can i if i'm nothing if i'm the silence if i'm the infinite if i'm the oneness if i'm the timeless then how would i register that there's something in separation from that and then if i am then what am i and what's observing that so in that way you clarify out all the all ideas of separation or duality of being something that can be affected by something else or a body that can be affected by another body or a thinker that's affected by other th thoughts you know so you just keep inquiring and in that way through spiritual purification either through self-inquiry and the observer or through the course of miracles they both at the end lead to the same thing the discovery that um, you you were never a thought you were never a body and other people are not really bodies and thoughts either that's not the truth of what they are that's all an illusion you see so then the course in miracles starts to think that this whole world is an illusion it's not real you see but you have to be in that place of that infinite place before that even would make sense otherwise it sounds like gobbledygook um so 
Okay, yeah, I think uh, I'll, I'll stop on that question. I'm going to press the stop button.